Very warm welcome to our event tonight, and I hope you enjoy the pre-cocktail downstairs. So I would like to begin the event with group photos. So may I, may I now invite French ambassador and our panelists on stage, please. Our panelists, please be on stage. May I now call on His Excellency, French Ambassador, to deliver speech. Thank you. Your Excellency, Ambassador of Mexico, and you, Madam, dear Director of UN Women, Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific, distinguished guests, dear friends, Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure, indeed, and it's a grand plaisir for me to welcome all of you. Uh, here at the Alliance Francaise, the host of a second edition of the global event Night of Ideas in Thailand. The Night of Ideas is a celebration of the free flow of ideas between countries, cultures. For the past six years, the Institut Francais has been organizing this event worldwide to invite guests from all walks of life, artists, scientists, researchers, to have thought, provoking debates based on a common theme from current challenges to our time. In a context marked by extremely rapid ecological and social changes, it is with no surprise that the topic chosen for this year, Closer, make us question human beings' impact on the world and other species. These debates will take place not only here, as you know, in Bangkok, but also in Paris, in Mexico, as a matter of fact, in 150 cities around the world, 70 countries. Given the current social distancing measures, the Night of Ideas will also be streamed live in a special 24 digital experience. Most recently, COVID-19 has exposed the weaknesses of high-density urban areas but has also revealed how our ways of living can lead to changes in cities. The Embassy of France, together with IRASEC and Alliance Francaise, have chosen to focus on the role of citizens, including women, and I would say especially women, in urban changes based on the specific nuances found in South Asian cities. So speakers from diverse backgrounds such as researchers, professors, activists from youth movement, 
Director of Urban Design and Development Center, have been gathered for this public debate to bring different perspectives to the topic. This debate will also put forward local urban work carried out by the Urban Design and Development Center, UDDC, and will present the short films made by the students of Alliance Francaise and from Hirasek, showing how citizens from Bangkok engage in different ways to their city. This event is also the launch of a series of debates which will take place throughout the year around the same ecological and civic transitions in Southeast Asia cities. These conferences are organized by IRASEC and the Embassy of France and have been awarded and supported by the French Edalambert from the Institut Francais in Paris. I would like to take this opportunity to give a special mention to UN Women, with whom we have prepared a program after the night, an event based around women engaged in the protection of environment, which will take place in a couple of weeks, in April this year, in the lead up of a very important forum, the Generation Equality Forum, which will be organized by Mexico, in Mexico, and in France, in Paris. In this framework, the Embassy of France, together with UN Women and the Embassy of Mexico, are preparing a six-month ambitious, long schedule of events related to gender equality, which we will announce very soon. Eventually, I would like to acknowledge with gratitude our main partners for this event, namely the Institute Enrich Ball and New DDC Chulalongkorn. Also allow me to make a special mention for Hirasek and especially for Christine. I know you have been uh, very active and uh, you are a key part of uh, this event. Absolutely, but I wanted to mention your name. So thank you all for being here and now let's open the floor for a free flow of ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your speech. So our panel discussion will begin very soon, in three minutes. While we are organizing the place, I just uh, would like to remind you that our event now is broadcasted live as well. So um, please help us like and share. And also after tonight, there will be more events um, coming, more exhibition here at Alliance Française until April this year. And you can check the program on the website. Good evening. I haven't had a chance to introduce myself yet. My name is Kritika Klut from National News Bureau of Thailand, and I'll be your host and moderator for panel discussion tonight. Well, as you can see on the screen, oh, sorry, as you can see already that um, the panel discussion today is about urban changes in Southeast Asia. What is citizens' role? This is a very relevant and relatable to the situation that is happening in the region right now because of um, the very fast-paced economic development, resulting in very rapid transformation of the city. So 
these changes, of course, have impact on our lives, both negative and positive ones, but oftentimes is ne either neglected or not talked about enough. So our panel today will shine more light on what we should and what we could do as citizens in finding balance in living in such cities. And our session tonight is joined by a series of specialists in urban issues, both from Thailand and France as well, and one of them will join us remotely. So now may I call on our first panelist, Dr. Niramon Seri Sukun on the stage, please. A round of applause for her, please. <laughs> Dr. Niramon, she's the director of Urban Design and Development Center, and she's also an assistant professor of Department of Urban and Regional Planning from Faculty of Architecture, Chulalongkorn University. She works on urban regeneration and development projects in large scale. And the second panelist, Dr. Sarayut Sapsukha, may I call you on the stage. <laughs> Dr. Sarayut, he's an assistant to President Chulalongkorn University, and he's also a lecturer, Faculty of Architecture from the same university. And he's also a co-founder of Ban Gudijin Museum from Gudijin Community. What is Gudijin Community? You hear more from him tonight. And he will share his view tonight as academic and also citizen who is directly in, engaged in developing his own community as well. And the third panelist is Dr. Adele Esposito. Dr. Adele, please. <laughs> Dr. Adele, she's a research fo fellow at the French National Center for Scientific Research and French Research Institute on Contemporary Southeast Asia or IRASEC. It's very much involved with urban international internationalization in Southeast Asia. And she now coordinates the research program called Cities of the New Silk Road in Southeast Asia. So she's definitely an expert in this region. And the, the next one is the Honorable Jiratip Tewakun Ha. <laughs> Ms. Jiratip, she's an architect and research from Research and Design Service Center, King Mongkut, and University of Technology, Tonbury. And she's also a co-founder of Young Ton Group. This is a very inter uh, interesting group that encourages um, young people in developing their own community. And she will talk more about it tonight. And the last one, Dr. Dominique Alba, she is joining us remotely. A round of applause for her, please. Dr. Dominique, she's um, an architect and she joined Jean Nouvelle's agency in 1982. She took, she took over general management of the Pavilion de la Seno in 2003 and became deputy director of the Atelier Parisian Dominism, sorry for my French, in 2008 and became managing director since 2017. A round of applause again for our, all of our panelists tonight. <laughs> Yes, but before we begin, I would like to, before we move on further discussion, I would like to begin our session tonight with very interesting uh, two joint video presentations that you will see tonight. Um, this is a very good example of life of citizen in cities with massive development in two cities, um, in Melaka, Malaysia, and Sihanouville, Cambodia. Enjoy. manifests in a 10 billion US dollar project called Malacca Gateway. The master developer KAJ Development is a Malaysian company. Power China is the Chinese partner. It is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative due to its strategic location at the Malacca Straits and its tourist potential. Three islands are reclaimed here and one natural island will be expanded. On one of these islands, a free trade economic zone is going to be established. Moreover, this island will eventually become a financial center. 
a deep sea harbour is going to be built. The next island that has already started to be reclaimed will feature a cruise harbour where three cruise ships can embark and disembark at the same time. The project is scheduled to be completed in 2032. The cruise terminal is developed in cooperation with Royal Caribbean to expand Malaysia as a cruise hub. It is one of the efforts to promote mass tourism in Malacca. While local authorities and the developers emphasize the benefits of Malacca Gateway, such as increasing GDP, increasing the number of inhabitants and creating new jobs, the Portuguese people complain about the negative impact on their people. They argue that the water flow is obstructed because Malacca Gateway is too close to the Portuguese community and therefore the area has become silted. What they are doing is just over the limit. It's just driven by greed. So much so the whole place is going to stink. You know, not now clean water to come and flood. Channel. As they say, uh, siltation. The siltation is the biggest factor now. At the present moment, we can see that the mud has risen up quite high. And uh, those days, the water never recedes and becomes dry. Now the water recedes and the whole place becomes dry. It's like a desert there when the water recedes. So I would say that the mud has risen about two to three feet high. Last time there was at least some water that we can push our boats and come closer to the shore when the water recedes. Now it's impossible because the whole place becomes dry. And when there is no wash off or the water doesn't ply that area and wash away whatever is on the top of the surface of the mud, the mud becomes smelly. And no fish or no other like uh, cockles and so on, they won't breed there anymore. Because the mud is filthy. It's smelly even. And eventually, even the restaurant down here won't be able to tolerate the smell. Because uh, now I go to your house and I dig. You got no place to stay, same like the fish. Correct? So they can dig sand from the center of the sea. The fish will run. Uh. Because my, my environment has been polluted. Uh. Right. And the city all finished. The noise. The water also become dirty. And where there all no, no stone we can pass out on it. When you dig, the stone will come up so we cannot pass. Destroy our livelihood. So you have a lot more difficulties fishing now? Also around 70%. Another thing is the, the sheep uh, which are dig the sand, they don't care about the fishermen. Uh. They move, they don't care about you. We see them, we have to avoid. Not they avoid, we have to avoid. So now if I put in my net, when they come in, how I want to avoid? I have to cut my net. Uh. Every time we have to sew net uh, because our net was stuck with a stone. Uh. Before we can go other people's place because they also, they also, they also got fishermen. I go to your house and fish, you get angry, ma. It's not nice to do this thing to our land. We got only this for ourselves, for our Portuguese people. You know? So by doing this, we feel very hurt. But God only knows who can just stop them and not to do these things, keep on carrying on. Legacy, legacy. So this is the, the very last of the boundary to show you the separation between the, the, sea, the sea and the original seashore. Now all the houses that were actually around were either abandoned or they were just uh, torn down. Now, even if you're not strong head, you cannot stay here. If you're not strong enough, the act activity, the moving, everything can make people crazy. People move out, they move because a so high place cannot to survive to live in anymore. All my life, 
I have too much experience, everything, too much many things together, more around Cambodia survival, survive to lead, fight, everything. So, so difficult life. So much. I can't be small, small with it. When I was young, I always like, uh, I want something different, my brother, different, my friend, different thing. I'm 13 years old, I buy own land. I buy a land. And I make a little house. I cut my finger, like half finger off, because the act try to make chop chop and pull the ground, make roof, everything. I come against the village. I make Eden bar, Eden hostel. I build room with my sister. I build all the hostel. I build a bar. I build everything. And some person come to look at me like, where are you? I has been there. And then I say, oh, it's okay. <laughs> it didn't have a lot of people. A lot of all the girls live here. They live with me. They have children. They have Parents, I make sure amount for them at least $250, make sure this amount. The rest can eat, can hear her send money to D, 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 D. The story, my people, is growing up. So a lot of people from another province come to King in Sinekir. Before the people working only cleaning only 120, 150, but now they can get like 180 going up to four, five hundred dollars per month. The people working contracts and there they stay over there. Most Cambodia people stay in there. No have room, they just take the slide wood and cover of uh, like the room. This one, like, I think maybe they're building only two or three labor because, like, only one meter in the ground. Ah, oh, now it's labor. I hope it's be okay. We're scaring, like, the same in the You heard about, like, uh, one is drop off. And the collapse of a building under construction in Cambodia is now known to have killed 18 people. Rescue officials said more than 24 others were hurt when the structure came down in the coastal city of Sihanoukville. Four people have been arrested, including the Chinese owner and the head of the construction firm. If you compare about living, okay, Chinese not very good living. They like building the country, they like this. But uh, about business, them the best. I meet some Chinese, they have very hard life. They come to move here, they try to make business here. They bring wine, bring baby, bring everything. They come here, they sing maybe, they start new life. Free, dom for them. Uh, they can make something nice, better. Depend, you know, like good and bad. Maybe twenty percent of Chinese I see around here now they more calm. When you walk on the road, they start. <laughs> Ten billion US dollar project. short version of the presentation. Please be seated. As you can see in the videos that two people have different ways of survival and, and have different uh, ways of life and um, just 
different ways to learn how to make a living in different cities. But a person, our panelist, who would talk directly about it is Dr. Adele. She's directly engaged in these two projects. So Dr. Adele, how is it when you first went there? Starting from Sihanouville first. Okay, so um, if we have chosen to show these two documentaries side by side, uh, it is in order to show that there is, there is a world of difference uh, the stands between uh, Melaka in Malaysia and Sihanoukville in Cambodia from the point of view of the role of the residents, I would not say only citizens, but, cities, uh, but residents more broadly, and the way they imagine how to engage with uh, urban change. So the two cities have much in common. Uh, both are uh, secondary cities uh, that are experiencing fast dramatic and disorienting processes of urban change. And for this reason, they are also representative of broader processes at work in Southeast Asian cities. So uh, before making the point about how uh, this world of difference uh, can tell us about the role of residents, uh, let me give you some background information about the two cities. So, may I start from Malacca, or you want me to start? Yeah, yeah it's Malacca. Okay. Is yeah, it's okay. So, uh, the first documentary film was made by Dr. Monica Arnett um, in the framework of the research program Crisea, and uh, relates how the and why the Malacca's um, Christian community uh, contests the mega project uh, called Malacca Gateway. Uh, so this project comprises um, a new port and uh, mixed uh, residential and commercial uh, facilities on four islands, uh, which are located right in front of the historic uh, city of Malacca. So this community uh, is composed of uh, now some uh, 1,200 people. Uh, they are the descendants of the ancient Portuguese migrants uh, who settled in uh, Malacca in the 16th century and mixed up through a marriage with a lot of other components of the urban population. So they settled down in what is called the Portuguese settlement, uh, which was established in the 1930s by uh, the church who secured the land. And um, since there, uh, they have depended on fishery for their material survival, but also they have constructed their identity and their world vision on the base of their daily relationship with the sea. So as you have seen from the film, uh, land reclamation has two immediate consequences on the community. The first is silting and the second is water pollution. But also there is a third uh, consequence because uh, as a uh, long-term uh, consequence of the land redevelopment, the community may, uh, may be obliged to move somewhere else. So, um, as a marginal community from the ethnic point of view, the Christian are uh, strongly cohesive. Uh, they share a common religion, Christianity, uh, a language, so the Creole uh, Papia Christian language, as well as the belief to be the only remaining community, Portuguese community in the region, that they survived all while taking care of their cultural heritage for more than 500 years. So under the guidance of a small group of leaders and elders, they have formed uh, the SAVE, the Portuguese Action Committee, uh, in which the community's members are all in various way, ways involved. So this community movement, uh, which uh, receives support from local NGOs as well, as well as from different advisors, uh, is, responsi is responsible for tenacious yet peaceful actions of contestations against the project uh, the most famous of which has been what has been called the Coffins Protest in 2018, when members of the community lay down in coffins in order to signify that their, the life of their community uh, would die uh, if the project uh, would go on, and also as a nomen um, of bad luck for the community because of the symbolic meaning of the coffins. 
And how is the impact of, of such protests? Well, it is difficult to say because uh, the project itself has been pending for a number of years, depending on the, local, uh, on the national uh, political context. It has been suspended for two years now um, for various reasons. That Until now, right? Sorry? Until now, the project has been suspended yeah, until now. Yeah, it has been complicated because from as there, there was a new government in 2018, the project was kind of suspended uh, with other projects which are related to the Belt and Road Initiative. But now and then it was uh, authorized again, but it is stopped because of COVID. And uh, now apparently uh, the company is not anymore in charge, but the government wants to continue with the project. So actually the, the community, from as far as I understand, they are trying to relate to the situation, seeing how they can actually uh, continue to act, already taking into consideration that maybe the project will not f go forward. But so it's, it's not officially revoked. It is suspended. It has been suspended by official uh, decisions, right. but the company has gone to court, and so we don't know now if what is going to happen. What about the situation in Sihanoukville? So the situation in, uh, in Sihanoukville is um, is much different, as you could see in the in the video. So Sihanoukville is a small coastal town, uh, which is located in the south of Cambodia. It is a port and also a seaside resort. And it has been targeted by large infrastructure projects during the last years, which have been funded both by Chinese and Japanese donors. Uh, also, and probably more specifically, it has also been targeted by a numerous uh, real estate developments, uh, which are driven by uh, Chinese uh, individuals and companies. So we cannot really speak about one only project here, but rather as a proliferation of small scale urban projects that reshape and expand the cities significantly. So Sienoville, before it was a small town with village characteristics, and now it is developing into a landscape of skyscrapers and casinos. Right, what about people's engagement in Sienoville? Yeah, so uh, the difference is that, um, as the documentary show, uh, so this documentary is, uh, was made by two uh, master students from the University of Montreal, um, so the the video show that uh, the um, the three women that now we just saw two, but there was also one uh, another Chinese woman. They take advantage of this uh, socio-economic context in order to make a living. Uh, so it is very difficult to talk about community here, while the community is very much present in the Melaka case. Rather, there are individuals were struggling, uh, sometimes even enjoying the benefits of this socioeconomic context, uh, and they enjoy the fact, in some, some, in some cases, to be living in a city which is literally in the making. Um, but on another note, uh, also research which has been carried out in the field of sociology show that um, urban developers, um, especially Chinese urban developers, they try to build boundaries between uh, Chinese uh, construction workers and Cambodian construction workers in order to prevent any manifestation of solidarity between these two groups. Uh, so we, are, we have two different situations here, uh, two different dreams in some way by the people, from the point zero of collective uh, organization and action in Sianoville to its maximal value in Melaka. What about your, your first impression when you, first, when you went to these two places? What was your, what were you thinking about the city? What, what was your opinion? So for a researcher, it's very difficult to speak about the first impression because we are used in studying for long periods and then at the end of very long periods, have some comments. <laughs> and um, of course, as a, a human being, um, there is, in Sienoville, there is a kind of uh, astonishment in front of the rapidity of urban development. And it's also uh, uh, difficult for uh, someone who wants to do research to move away from a feeling of astonishment and try to understand, uh, without judgment if possible, uh, the rationalities that drive individuals to act in space in different ways 
Also, sometimes in doing things that myself I can consider as not ethical, like separate people, for instance. And in Malacca, um, what I felt, it was this huge separation uh, between the historic city, which is really for tourism and heritage, and the sea, from which uh, in some way the space was cut off. You cannot really see the sea, you can't really experience the river, the, the contact with the sea when you, when you hang out in Malacca. And so the, 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 um, I can see that there are different various attempts to reconnect with the sea, uh, but the way that developers do is to create something completely new, so this huge development. Right, that is interesting, and it's very different from Bangkok as well, I suppose. Yes, of course, cities. yeah, yeah. I think that the different cases, that's what we were saying uh, with Niramon also, is that the two cases that are shown here really show how people try to survive, um, but there's no, um, there's no participation, actually. People, the community in Melaka, they, they fight against someone, and in Sanogville, they just try to uh, find space for freedom, individual freedom. Whilst the, the, what we are going to see about Bangkok is that there are other cases in which community can be in some way and up to a certain extent involved in the development. Right, and, and when you were conducting your research, have you had a chance to to have a deep talk with Cambodian people? Do they do they want to engage themselves more in, for example, the same actors in Malaysia like protests and stuff? So um, when I conducted research in Cambodia, it was not uh, when I had a chance to talk really to conduct some kind of ethnographic fieldwork. It was in other cities, so in Siem Reap and in Phnom Penh. Now uh, there are researchers of my team who are trying to, um, to do field work. I'm saying trying because COVID-19 is limiting our capacities to conduct field work. But what we see in Cambodia um, broadly is this um, fascination for modernization. Um, and also the perception that, uh, differently from what we see in Malacca, uh, there's no law especially in Sianville. The law is there in Cambodia, of course, and it is also enforced. But as for Sianville, there is this impression in the minds of people that uh, they can uh, act without reference to the law. We, see, we, we could see that one building collapsed because, of course, building uh, regulations were not respected, and that this context is uh, lawless, or I could also say law-free in some way. And in this uh, freedom from legislation, people, uh, and especially Chinese developers, they have the impression that can, they can realize a dream and they create something new from scratch. But of course, the other side of the coin is what we saw, these Cambodian women who really try to uh, make a living for their relatives and for their siblings, and they are at the same time agents and victims of this way of developing the city. Right, thank you. Any panelists uh, would like to share your ideas? Dr. Dominic? No. Okay, then we move on another presentation, two presentations. Um, these two presentations explore the role of citizens in urban transformation and how the locals and professionals could join hand together. The first one is presentation of Bangkok Walkable City Project developed by Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, Ministry of Transport and Urban Design and Development Center. And the second one is documentary, very interesting, um, made by Kun Nesh Chanok, I'm not sure if she's here, uh, she's here with us, and Kun Pai Kat. They are um, students from Alliance Francais and they study in, fr in France as well. Well, you see on the video that they express very well about comparison, about um, urbanism between Thailand and France. Enjoy.
Pour bien comprendre les projets urbains menés selon les objectifs de Lavable City ou de Walkable City, il est important d'avoir à l'esprit quelques-unes des spécificités de nombreuses grandes villes sud-est asiatiques, en l'occurrence ici Bangkok. Depuis les années 90, cette ville, peuplée aujourd'hui de 10 millions d'habitants, a connu des transformations urbaines considérables, dont une extraordinaire expansion spatiale et démographique, un accroissement exponentiel du nombre de véhicules routiers, et se faisant des pollutions urbaines, et dans le même temps, une importante réduction des espaces verts. Il en découle une situation d'embouteillage quasi chronique et des difficultés de franchissement des voies de circulation pour les personnes non motorisées. C'est dans ce contexte que les projets sur lesquels travaille actuellement l'administration métropolitaine de Bangkok, la BMA, divers ministères et des agences d'urbanisme comme l'UDDC, Urban Design and Development Center, ont toute leur valeur. Le Chao Praia Sky Park a été construit sur la structure abandonnée depuis plus de 30 ans du projet Skytrain Lavaline qui devait être le premier système de transport ferroviaire de masse de Bangkok. Le reste de construction séparant les deux voies de circulation du pont était surnommé Sapan Dehan, ou littéralement pont amputé. Lors de l'élaboration du plan directeur pour la conservation et la réhabilitation du quartier de Kadijin Klongsan, Kun Pradi, président de la communauté Boubaram, a posé la question suivante au docteur Niramon. Et pourquoi ne pas utiliser sa panne douane Il est là, attendant d'être développé. Avant de devenir le premier jardin au monde en jambant une rivière, il a fallu relever de nombreux défis. Étant donné les limites de la structure du pont qui ne pouvait pas être modifiée, il y avait une multiplicité de questions à prendre en compte à chaque étape. Dès le début du projet, les personnes impliquées ont dû participer à de multiples séries d'audiences publiques, à des sessions de planification avec les communautés et à des consultations avec les organismes concernés pour que tout le monde soit sur la même longueur d'onde. This is uh, local leaders always um, support and always um, op give us the opinion, the ideas, help us to sharpen, I mean, the, the design. Dans une ville tropicale comme Bangkok, on aimerait avoir des arbres qui procurent de l'ombre. Cependant, le choix des plantes a été très contraint. Tout d'abord par la limitation de la portance de la structure qui interdit la quantité de terre et d'eau nécessaire pour nourrir des grands arbres. Ensuite, le jardin, dont l'entretien doit être simple et efficace, exclut les plantes qui nécessitent trop de soins. Enfin, la conception du jardin devait être conforme aux normes de sécurité routière, puisque le Sky Park est bordé de chaque côté par une voie de circulation. Par conséquent, il ne devait y avoir aucun arbre dont le feuillage pouvait gêner la vision des conducteurs ou se briser et se disperser lors d'une tempête tropicale. The, the project was uh, chosen as a strategic project because it can tackle two main problems of this, uh, this city. The first is the, the mobility problem. Uh, in Bangkok, especially in the, the old town, in the inner city area, you can see uh, in both sides, uh, east side and the west side, you have a lot of uh, tourist attraction. You have palace, you have uh, old temples, you have a garden, but all of them are poorly connected. Au final, le skypark a principalement été conçu pour promouvoir les transports alternatifs à pied et à vélo au-dessus du fleuve, afin de relier les districts de Tonbury et de Pranakorn. Le concept devait également offrir un nouveau panorama sur les berges de la ville et être un espace public permettant d'y rencontrer des amis faire de l'exercice ou de se détendre. L'ombrage des grands arbres n'était donc pas la priorité absolue. The idea is to make a strategic plan to regenerate the inner city areas. This is the first um, regeneration plan uh, by BMA. As you know, BMA is very big uh, city, expand our work to the agricultural uh, land uh, outside. So um, BMA would like to uh, create a balance between uh, the quality of life, as, uh, uh, like uh, F has mentioned, the quality of life in the inner city area to be more livable, to heal, to reconnect the urban um, ecosystem uh, by uh, linking um, the existing green um, area in the city. Dr Niramon estime que malgré sa taille modeste, le projet a pris une importance démesurée en tant que catalyseur de nouvelles initiatives et opportunités de régénération urbaine. Avec un investissement minimal, le Skypark a créé de nouvelles voies pédestres et cyclables. 
C'est un exemple de la manière dont on peut tirer parti d'un espace inoccupé au profit du bien public. Un prototype pour les nombreux bâtiments et structures abandonnés à Bangkok qui ont été négligés et peuvent être réutilisés tout en embellissant la ville et améliorer la qualité de vie. C'est aussi un message quant à la nécessité d'espace vert dans la ville. Outre le fait que le public peut l'utiliser à des fins pratiques et quotidiennes, le skypark est également un symbole vert qui sert à relier les parcs publics des deux côtés du fleuve. Ce prototype peut être une source d'inspiration pour accélérer l'écologisation et la fonctionnalité de Bangkok. Une des politiques clés de la BMA est d'augmenter les espaces verts de la ville de 5-6 mètres carrés par personne actuellement à 9 mètres carrés par personne comme recommandé par l'OMS. La stratégie proposée par l'UDDC est l'acupuncture urbaine. Faire très peu, mais le faire à un endroit stratégique. Ajouter des segments d'espaces verts pour créer des puzzles de liaison comme Sky Park, Green Bridge ou des améliorations sous les voies rapides. Pris dans leur ensemble, ces projets de petite envergure réduiront considérablement la distance moyenne d'accès aux espaces verts de Bangkok et augmenteront les voies réservées aux piétons. So, this is the idea that how can we connect the green space, reconnect the green space together and make the city more walkable. Bonjour. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Nechanok Saliva. J'ai 28 ans et j'ai fait un master à l'Université de Tours en planning and sustainability. Et en ce moment, je travaille comme urbaniste. Je m'appelle Paikhat. J'ai 36 ans. Il y a 8 ans, je fais un diplôme à l'école privée de cinéma à Paris. Et maintenant, je travaille comme réalisateur de publicité. Pour moi, urbaniste, c'est un pont pour quitter le développement, les villes et améliorer la qualité de la ville. Il y a quelques mois, je vous le suggère sur Facebook qui parlait de urbaniste et la ville célibataire. Ça me intéressait beaucoup. À mon avis, avoir plus de possibilités de rencontrer quelqu'un, il faut avoir beaucoup d'experts plus bien différents. L'enjeu pour urbaniste est de réfléchir à comment mettre en place des lieux publics comme les experts verts pour améliorer le cas de la ville et les rencontrer entre personnes. ประสบการณ์ที่เคยอยู่ในฝรั่งเศสหลายปีไม่ว่าจะเป็นที่นีสลียงหรือปารีสเองก็ตามสิ่งที่ผมเห็นได้ชัดแล้วเห็นเป็นข้อแตกต่างระหว่างประเทศไทยกับที่ฝรั่งเศสนั่นก็คือพื้นที่สาธารณะที่ฝรั่งเศสเองเนี่ยในแต่ละเมืองหรือในแต่ละพื้นที่เนี่ยมีพื้นที่สาธารณะหลายๆที่แล้วก็มีแหล่งเรียนรู้ใกล้ชุมชนมากกว่าที่ประเทศไทยไม่ว่าจะเป็นในเรื่องไม่ว่าจะเป็นพิพิธภัณฑ์หรือว่าห้องสมุดก็ตามค่อนข้างจะใกล้แหล่งชุมชนมากต่างจากประเทศไทยที
ที่เราจะเห็นว่ากว่าจะเดินทางหรือว่าแต่ละชุมชนน่ะกว่าจะเดินทางไปถึงแหล่งเรียนรู้เหล่านั้นน่ะค่อนข้างยากดองเลฟูชูเอสไปเกอร์อบนิสต์อูเอ่ออุบัติเหตุในปาสโลมองเดอเกษียงเดลาลัวเอลีกูลีกูลาซิองเมื่อไหร่ที่เอ่ออุนคริสตัวเดอสังติมองเนจังไหร่ที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อที่เอ่อโดยเฉพาะชุมชนที่ผมสนใจคือชุมชนคลองเตยที่ทุกวันนี้ยังคงเป็นแหล่งเสื่อมโทรมอยู่ผมเลยคิดว่าถ้าเรามีแหล่งเรียนรู้ใกล้ชุมชนคลองเตยหรือมีพื้นที่สาธารณะมากขึ้นเนี่ยมันจะช่วยให้ผู้คนน่ได้เกิดการเรียนรู้ซึ่งกันและกันและช่วยการพัฒนาชุมชนเนี่ยให้ยั่งยืนมากขึ้นผมในฐานะคนทําสื่อผมอยากเป็นส่วนหนึ่งในการสร้างอิมแพคให้กับสังคมโดยการเชื่อมโยงภาครัฐเอกชนและประชาชนให้เข้ามามีส่วนร่วมในการทำงานกันอย่างแท้จริงเพื่อที่จะพัฒนาผังเมืองและชุมชนให้ยั่งยืนและแข็งแรงครับและในสำหรับฐานะที่เป็นนักผังเมืองนะคะดิฉันคาดหวังว่าผังเมืองของเราเนี่ยจะไม่ใช่แค่ควบคุมในเรื่องของโครงสร้างหรือว่าข้อกำหนดต่างๆแต่ดิฉันหวังว่าผังเมืองเนี่ยจะช่วยพัฒนาความสุขของคนในเมืองด้วยค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะแม็กซี่โบกู All right, Dr. Niramon, I think the audience would love to hear from you about your project. Can you tell us more about Amputated, Amputated Bridge Project? I, I thought I would be the last. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yes, it has been... Um, um, uh, before that, I um, would like to thank um, um, IRASEC, uh, the French Embassy and Institut Francais. Uh, to produce uh, this uh, wonderful project um, for us. Actually, I thank you as um, one of the team, actually, so that you'd also belong to the study team. Um, the project was um, very difficult. I Actually, I was here last year, and it was just, um, I mean, under construction. So um, I'm very glad that finally it has been um, realized in uh, reality. Um, so actually, um, the, the case in Bangkok or um, the projects that I have been involved uh, maybe cannot compare with uh, what you have seen from uh, Sihanoubil or uh, Malekka, which is um, really um, difficult. And uh, uh, the community has to deal with something really gigantic uh, development. Um, in my case, it's more, um, how to say, uh, event is a city scale, city project, but it's much uh, smaller. And um, I have been quite unfortunate that the project I have been involved never been really in um, a serious stake. Not, um, I mean, um, how to say, a serious problem. So it's like uh, people come together because they want something better for the neighborhood or the, the community. Sarayud is going to uh, elaborate later. Um, uh, However, even is uh, much, uh, how to say, smaller compared to um, what you see from uh, Cambodia and uh, Malaysia. It's, it has been really tough and really difficult. It has from, been- From which point? Um, from, I think, from the point uh, as a planner. Um, I, I would say I, I stand, I, I, I would like to give the will um, as, a, as a person who stand between two worlds, the worlds of the, the government, the BMA, Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, and the world of the citizens. So um, from uh, BMA, um, since I work, work with them closely, I realize um, how difficult for them um, you have, uh, I mean, Bangkok, you witness that uh, this is uh, maybe the worst place to walk um, compared to other cities. Um, it doesn't mean that um, Bangkok uh, officials uh, don't want that. Um, the problem has been, the, I mean, um, a very um, 
let's say, highly complex and very fragmented, at the same time, very uh, centralized um, system, a lot of structural problem. Sometimes um, BMA would like to improve the, uh, the land under the expressway. Uh, they cannot do, um, automatically they need the permissions from Ministry of Transportation, always this siloism, very difficult. So, um, um, amazingly, recently I have been involved in a sidewalk project in the Old Town area. You know what? You see um, a lot of lines um, when you walk through the walkway. Um, there are 18 organizations. Um, 18? Yes. Uh, I, I thought there are many, but I never imagined it's 18. And just, I, just in one area? Yes, uh, along the way when you walk. Okay. And uh, something that Bill Gates uh, took photographs and posts and yes, and, and underground, many. And on ground you see, um, on, on how to say, uh, telephone booths and a lot of things. So um, this BMA need to ask the permission, um, a long process to do. So this is a BMA, even they have a budget, but they cannot do as they want. They need a permission under this structure. Um, uh, no need to speak about uh, the urban project need to, uh, how to say, demands a kind of uh, political stability and political commitment under the, I mean, this climate, I mean, no guarantee. And on the other hand, um, the citizens, um, Yes, we have been taught in the planning school that you need to listen to um, citizens, but I would say citizens or the communities, they are also not very easy. They are very diverse, uh, so that you can elaborate on this. There are uh, people who want uh, tourism, tourists uh, who don't want and want this, want that, very diverse. So um, you, you need to have a methodology to really um, listen to them and consolidate these, um, I mean, uh, problems and idea and dreams. So, um, so I, um, I mean, always in the, the borderline between two worlds and I think um, it has been very difficult but um, this project uh, is uh, a good example that uh, under this, um, how to say, constraints, something creative and, how to say, positive can happen. And I would say this project has been really came from a, a grow up, really bottom up, as the video has said. I, I wouldn't uh, repeat it, but um, um, I think, uh, Participation, consultation, deliberative planning process is uh, one of the best uh, methodology that um, I, as a planner, because uh, it really helps you to understand what is really a problem if you uh, have a, a good methodology to hear and um, uh, process and um, or the, these uh, opinions. And um, through like uh, four years, um, up and down since uh, we have submitted the plan. Um, it has been like fluctuated, but it always um, uh, went back to the Sapa Gotamo, the BMA, the BMA Council. Council. Um, it has been dropped and it has been returned always because uh, BMA officials, they really want it to happen. They have been working hard to negotiate with the Ministry of Transportation, who responsible for the whole country, not only BMA. So you understand the project is just um, three, uh, 300 meters long. It's very short and very small compared to like um, a billion uh, dollars. Um, yes, expressway, so it's, you, you have to wait. So they have been very persistent to uh, negotiate on this and, and also, uh, the communities always ask whenever, when and wherever they, they have an opportunity. For example, you see Kun Pradit and Kun Warachai. Yeah. They, they, they said to me, um, because uh, you see in the video that they, they, they were the one who said, uh, why don't you use some, uh, uh, repurpose this um, structure? Um, so they said, if um, the project didn't happen, 
you're going to see the flash mob of uh, like uh, advocates going to swim, swim across the Jaipuria River <laughs> or dance on the on the on the bridge uh, just to um, how to say. Uh, try to say, uh, tell the BMA that this is what uh, people really need. And yes, uh, please, um, um, yes, uh, make a progress. So finally it happened. And the residents are happy? Uh, well, uh, ask him okay. because he's a <laughs> resident. <laughs> Yes, of course, we are very happy with that project because there's not so many um, public space in, in that area for, for people for, for to do exercise and also relax. So I, I think there's a, a, a good things that happen in, in, in that area and, and there's a starting point uh, for an, another projects that, that BMA will learn that it, they are a success to make a public space like this. That is uh, the bridge lines along the Gudijin community as well. And, and, and Kun Sarayut, you're um, a local from this community and you co-founded the museum. Yes. So what is it, actually we, I promised the audience in the beginning that I would um, let you explain more about what is Gudijin community because this is, this is one of the pilot areas for urban development, right, in, yes. in, in Bangkok. So what is it actually? Um. In, in fact, uh, starting point of the museum is not, uh, we are not concerning about the tourists. Um, uh, let, let me uh, explain a little bit more about the communities for if anyone has never been there. Um, Gudijin is very old communities. Um, it's, I think it's older than Bangkok right now so, um, because um, before we, Bangkok moving to the east of the river, uh, there's uh, already communities on, on the western side with also the Gudijin area here. Uh, the striking of the community uh, starting when the, um, uh, Bangkok starting to be modernized, uh, we changed our transportation mode from the river, uh, from the, the water uh, by boat um, to the street, and which everyone needs car to transport. And the struggle of the community, one, one thing is that we are inaccessible by car, <laughs> and then every, everyone who live in Bangkok needs car. So um, the community is starting to run down, and the value is, is going to um, dropping uh, because of the value um, we, we are inaccess inaccessible by cars. And, and the other thing is that um, the communities, uh, the land of whole communities belong to Catholic mission of Bangkok, uh, which is very strange. Um, many of you may not know that. Um, uh, the problem is that uh, when this land belongs to the um, Catholic Mission of Bangkok, um, it's difficult for BMA to develop because they cannot uh, make a funding and budget on the private land. Like so what Dr. Niramon said, that there were like 18 organizations. Yes, so this right, is another right. example yeah, this, of this, headache. It's like a bridge <laughs> because bridge is belong to someone else. So right. the community is, is, is the same. So it belong to uh, the Catholic communities. So. Um, I mean, government cannot spend funding to develop that. Um, and after it's uh, struggling, um, it's, it's starting to be, I mean, people are starting to move out because uh, they want to live in a better place. Uh, they want to live in a modern uh, lifestyle and it's starting to be run down. And I think the starting point started uh, 11 years ago when um, Association of Siamese Architects with Julangokon University and also UDDC, Dr. Nirmon and Dr. Pong Huan, who's sitting there <laughs> in the third row, starting uh, to do the projects of making a um, heritage map of the area. And what happened there is, uh, is very strange because when experts go there, um, they try to realize what is uh, the heritage over there. What, we, what most of them say, um, seen is that this uh, tangible heritage architecture and built environment. But when they asked um, the, um, the residents in there, they saw a lot of intangible heritage there, like um, recipe, uh, food recipe, right. um, like, um, um, you know, some 
cake, <laughs> the, the old cake, um, the very old Portuguese, um, like the, this place that, that they used to do some things in the past, something like that. And they just found out that um, there's a lot of things that uh, cannot start from the expert, but it has to start together with the residents. So it's become a series of projects, a lot of projects that run, I think it's about 10 years, right? Starting from art in soy, they make, they invited the artists to do the installation of arts in the communities and people um, who live there learning how to make their house beautiful, how to decorate their house and how to paint and starting to, to, to having a good um, environment. And back to their uh, starting point of our museums, the main reason that we, we build the museums is we are like a crazy family who invest in the, a lot of money on the museum with a snow return. And, and our museum is free to end for, for everyone to access because we, we don't want um, it to be charged. The, the purpose is just to preserve local heritage. Yes, um, uh, the, the reason behind is that we, we are not want to serve the tourism, but we want to improve the living environments. Our families and, and many people in the village um, want their children to stay there. Because if we leave the village run down, so everyone, including the children in our house, will move out because they cannot live in the bad environments. What we want to do is that we just want to create good environment for living. And our children can have something to be proud of. And they want to live here because we have a character. And that point can starting to be a um, benefit to other local business. And it's starting to have a, a, a cafe, a restaurant, um, um, traditional restaurant, and a lot of things that start to happen. That, that the, the main reason that we build a museum. In, in gathering huge and big community like that, what were your biggest challenges from the residents? Um, we have a big, big challenge. <laughs> but, but sometimes we cannot um, um, just do it. Um, I mean, I mean uh, the best thing is that um, if um, we are, have a good policy from the government, so uh, we can come down to, to talk together and, and to, to, to tell them that what, what we need in our livings and begin to, to have a good policy together. But if we cannot, I think um, we have to voice through nowadays weapons, social media. Right. Well, an another good, very good example of um, local gathering, successful local gathering is Young Tone Group. So what is Young Tone Group actually? Okay, um, Yang Ton is yeah. mean young generation of Tonburi. Tonburi is the name so, of the community. Uh, Tonburi is uh, it's like the the part the west side of the part of Bangkok. So and it's also our home. Um, so um, Yang Ton, uh, I can explain in four keywords like a conceptual keyword of what we do. Uh, first uh, is young generation. Uh, there's a, our main target that we, we want to empower them to concerning about their community uh, because we think that they are our future and, and can able, and able to drive um, the city uh, more livable. And the second one is the area base. We work as an area base. Is Tonbury, and uh, we try to work with the youth with um, um, several issues, um, and also because in order to um, uh, make our home livable, and thirdly is um, creative uh, creativity. Uh, we use the creativity as a tool. Um, for a organizing many workshops, activity with the youth, um, and urban action activity. For example, uh, for example, we uh, we have uh, last year uh, we we organized uh, the soccer event. It's called Yang Ton Cup. Yeah, Yang Ton Cup is a. <clears throat> It's a soccer that play, the player is a youth, is a local community. Uh, and the goal that, that 
this activity, uh, we want to promote uh, the uh, cultural value uh, in the neighborhood space that hidden in the Tonbury community. Uh, the Goody Jin is one of the places that we, we, we organize uh, the, the soccer. It, isn't it in the more or less the same area? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's next it's to each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and, and also we, from, from this, uh, event so we also um, organize the the like a public talk to make the dialogue uh, about lacking space in Tonbury because uh, the main user of the any public space is children is teenagers and the Tonbury is quite density now it's quite very uh, crowded so so uh, we want to like make the dialogue between all the stakeholders uh, to yeah to revise this or uh, develop uh, the uh, the public space yeah. and and the lastly my cue at this <laughs> lastly <laughs> is uh, connector so so it's it's like the, our roles our core team that we want to connect the local people that that they want any support with the other stakeholders such as NGO, academics, um, uh, any public sector or the local government um, to to collect the the um, resources that that the, the local want. Uh, and uh, finally, um, our goal is just to make our home livable by encouraging the youth um, uh, as a main driver um, for uh, develop uh, their community. Yes. As a founder of such group, why suddenly you made decision to create such group? What is your inspiration? Uh, because I I work as a researcher like uh, many years and. And and we and I just when I when I work, we just wrote just a report, not not to do like the action, anything. We revise, revise the roadmap and again and again. So so I think it's quite in my pain point that that I want to do something that contribute to the, our home, like in the action. Like implementing can can implement, so uh, so I have the friends that 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 have the same goal that that we want to do like something that that working with the youth and contributing to our home, so it's our ideas for setting this group. Right, and I, I would ask the same question as Kun um, Doctor Tirawood. So, what were your biggest challenges? when you founded such group? Uh, the challenge is, um, I think um, there is still less opportunities uh, for the local that, that can initiate of their own policies or, or their like, um, activity in, in their communities. Um, I think they still cannot um, um, cooperate with the local, I, I mean, uh, the government authority uh, productively. Uh, and because, uh, Dr. Nirmon that mentioned, because it's uh, the, the lake corrosion and uh, the, I mean, uh, the policy context is very complex and, and it have not facilitated or uh, influenced influence these co-productive relations. Um, and yeah, for example, uh, yeah, I note here, uh, when, when the local try to like deal with, with their issues, so is this still embedded in the, the local sector, hey, the policy sector, that the government also still have the play the important role yeah, to, to make the decision. So I think it's quite important. 
Yeah. It seems to be challenging, isn't it, in terms of yeah. um, collaboration between uh, the government side, the public side, and the citizen side. And and one of our panelists, I'm sure that uh, she knows very well about this this uh, kind of collaboration because she's been dealing with um, several government agencies, 18 organizations, as she mentioned. So, um, do you, Dr. Niramon, do you have any suggestion in terms of um, public and private sector collaboration? Um, I, I have a dream. I have a dream that um, we can elect, we can have an election at the district level. Um, I think um, what uh, Kunjiratip has mentioned is um, it always uh, the problems here. Um, we, I mean, as a citizen, we always experience the day-to-day -day problems, how the city function or, 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 or doesn't function. And, um, um, the, and the unit of the city that very close to us is a district office, um, which we don't elect them. I mean, who, um, in here, I'm not sure if you are Thai um, citizen or, or Bangkokian, do, do you know um, who's your district officer or the director? You, you don't remember because uh, they change very fast, like um, one year, two years, you start to develop the relationship or explain your, uh, your idea, project, trust, everything, and then moved. If, uh, and if you are, I mean, um, <laughs> If you are lucky, you will get a district officer who work very um, well and very visionary. So these people move even faster to a, a better district in the CBD, this kind of thing. So it's very difficult. I mean, compared to, um, I think um, Dominic Elba is going to uh, talk about Paris. Bangkok is a city that um, bigger than Paris, like, um, uh, hundred times, we, we have, uh, Bangkok is uh, 1,500 square kilometers, right. and uh, in Paris it's like something is 100, right, Dominique? Yes, so, yes, so, but we have an uh, um, election at uh, only the provincial, actually, Bangkok is a province, provincial level and we have like uh, the governor and we have uh, the, the city planning bureau and civil work bureau. And if you go to BMA, you will know how, how, how hard, I mean, they, um, uh, the, the work they have to, to deal with every day is um, the, the, the problem of uh, Bangkok is really complex, um, more and more complex and beyond any single agency can uh, ability that to, to deal with. So um, they need to really um, um, have a, I mean, a better local administration, just like in Paris or in, um, in, in, in Tokyo. Tokyo is a little bit uh, larger than, than, than Bangkok, but they have uh, two level of election. So uh, if I live in Shibuya, I, 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 I elect, uh, I, I vote for the mayor um, of my city, uh, but it's not the case here. So if you have a problem of the sidewalk or you would like to have a, like a, the playground for children, uh, in Tonburi you have uh, so many uh, schools, so you have a very high number of uh, young people, but you don't have this kind of space, you go to the district office and they will reply you like, this is not our job. And um, yes, it's not our job, and we, we have very limited budget, we cannot. So you go like uh, second time, third time, fourth time, and then you stopped because um, there's no use. So you, then you have to go to, at the city level, you have to lobby. So this is a, the, this is yeah. a structural problem that right. I think this is the most serious. And this is uh, my dream. If I have the ultimate dream, I have this dream. I have to, I can elect my, um, the mayor of my district. Right, so it's an issue of bureaucracy. Yes. And in France, Dr. Dominique, does it work in the same way? Or how is it different? Uh, it's, thank you for inviting me, and it's not very easy to understand exactly what's going on everywhere. But what we can say that I think all over the world today that, that there are places that guide us to think differently about our actions and inspire our thinking and change of way, our way of doing things. 
I think this is quite common and all the people that express themselves and all the films you show were telling us something about that. That we, we still have to think in long-term system like planification and uh, especially in your cities in Asia where you need to grow because you're, you need much more place than you have. We need it also in our old town in France, but the growth is really different. And our purpose now is much more to try to use what we've done in the last century than to create new things. We, we go on creating new things, but the most important targets are really to know how to, we have to use in a very nice way what we've already done. And uh, this is where the citizens get in. And uh, the citizens, they're really very efficient when we think about short term actions. And uh, what was made in Paris, because three, perhaps I will show just three examples. Uh, one very simple uh, is the participative, participatory budget. Uh, it's uh, 500 million euro on six years. That means quite 100 euro. 100 million by year uh, that are uh, decided, the use of those, this, this money is decided by the citizens. So they propose projects, the administration uh, organized the coherence between the project. Some project, for example, may be the same, so they put it together. After you have a final vote on several projects and after uh, the things are going on, the administration and the citizens may realize the things together. And uh, since uh, 2014, because this was made by Anne Hidalgo, it's uh, more than 2,500 uh, 2, projects that were realized. So it's a huge amount, small ones and big ones. Uh, things in equipment, things in public space, uh, things about inclusive situation, things about learning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is one, uh, one thing that helps to connect citizen and city. It's one example. And this, you can do it everywhere. You can do it in a, a small neighborhood to share it together. You can do it in a popular neighborhood. You can do it with the schools. The children are very efficient for that, etc. Another thing uh, that was uh, created in Paris is the, to allow a permit to revegetate to, you're allowed now to, to put your flowers around the tree that is in front of your uh, house. Uh, for, perhaps this is funny for you because in your cities, things grow everywhere and you have nature everywhere. As you know, it's not the case in Paris. It's a very mineral city. And so the fact to change Paris in a more natural city, if I may say it like that, or to have more, more nature, uh, one of the first step was to allow the citizens just to take it and to do it and to do it on the street. So the first step was around the trees and now they are allowed to go further on uh, because they are allowed to take the bitumen away. So that means that they have to ask the permit. You have a building uh, a vegetable permit for that, but you're allowed to take a part of bitumen and to put some uh, grass or vegetables or why not a tree there. And now in the, the, that is going to start now, it's really to have more and more trees in the streets in Paris and to have really streets for children. So the first step is to have the transformation of the streets that uh, go to the schools and to have playgrounds for the children with garden outside the schools in the public space. Because in the very dense city, we need to be in the public space. Paris is a, it's the same density of Dakar. It means that each day in Paris on the 100 square kilometer you, you, you said about, you told about, but including two woods, we have uh, 3.5 million people. The one that live, the one that work, the one that study, the one that visit. So it's a huge amount of people and it's amount of people, it's more or less like you have in your cities in Asia. It's not so different, but we have a, a long tradition of public space so now the target is really to change the way to use the public space and to involve the citizen in this. Taking the risk to have sometimes perhaps some designs that are not totally accorded to the high level of um, culture, for example. And the last point is what we did about the seven places. 
as you know, Anne Hidalgo uh, in uh, 2014 said, I want you to transform seven places very quickly. So the idea was to, but including the citizen participation. So the architects were in small houses, like a containers on the place. And they were allowed to start with transformations, including the desire of the people. And going on and going on and going on, it made the final design. So sometimes it's quite, it's very close from the, the, the things that were done by the people like Place des Fêtes. And sometimes it's more, quite more different like Place de la Bastille because we had to make more job about structure, changing the circulation of the cars, etc. So this is what the, the things I wanted to share with you, just to, to encourage the fact that uh, planification and long-term systems are really need to be challenged with the short-term swan and to really go on with the short-term swan is to play with the citizens because the administration is not the good place for that, if I may say it. Uh, the architects may be in between. The architect, they can just take place in that. I think in your countries, many of the young architects trying to get jobs. Uh, some of them I know uh, go in the neighborhoods and try to work very close to people just to, to start with a small shop or a, a small building or arranging a small square, etc. And these are very, very good things. And I think the politics has to, to, to be open-minded to that. And uh, in fact, the participatory budget is something quite efficient for that also, because you share also the money, not only the desire to do, but you give also the tools and also the money. I don't know what else I can say you, but um, I think that uh, we, we, we are working now. We have a sort of newspaper. I gave the documents to uh, Christine, but it is in French and we call it New Urbanities. And uh, she told me that you, told, you spoke about new normalities, <laughs> but it's quite the same. Say that uh, uh, perhaps more than uh, for us in, in Europe, um, it's it's uh, try to resolve a sort of contradiction uh, to respond effectively and quickly to society multiple transitions, both necessary and unpredictable, and without increasing our consumption of land. So this is very very difficult to do. But I think it's it's really the the thing we have to to go on and to face now in a, especially in this COVID period. Oh. Do doctor, yeah. Yeah. yeah, can you hear me? I hope it was clear for you. Yeah, it's yeah, clear it's for clear me, but I just have one question about headaches and, and bureaucracy in France, like in Thailand. Do you have it? Yes. yes. <laughs> and how, how, like for, for, ar for architects, how, how do you manage to build things? It takes time, and uh, you need to have faith in a sort of faith. <laughs> Uh, not face my face, but face true. And uh, I think, you know, uh, I'm used to tell, to tell there are two, two things. People say we want to do simple things and it's very difficult. And I say, no, you have to do in a simple way things very complex because the cities we like to live in are complex. We don't want to have a space that's only one thing uh, like that, like that, like that. We want, we love to be in a multitude of emotions. We want, we love to be in a multitude of systems. We want, love to be in a multitude of aesthetic. So the complexity is not a problem, but you have to organize it in a simple way. And what we do often is just to open conversation spaces where you have many technicians. For example, we work along the river Seine. It's not simple. But we put everybody around the table, everybody speaks, everybody can say what he wants to do. And our job is to make a sort of common way so that we can go on with the project. So it's really a sort of what I say, it's not only planification, it's not only short terms, it's also conversation. Right. So for you, conversation is the key for engagement. Yes. All right, since, since, thank you very much, Dr. and Dominique. Since Dr. Uh, Dominique shared with us experience um, from France, so I would like to ask Kun National as well. Uh, you are in the presentation and you mentioned one point which is very interesting, that urban planning somehow um, affects our love life. Can you elaborate? I 
I think you can take my microphone. Uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, because uh, last month ago, uh, I saw many uh, people talking on social media on Facebook because of urban planning. So that's why we are celibataire. C'est ça? Oui. Et pour moi, uh, because I am as, I'm working as an urban planner, and I'm thinking, yeah, it's like a challenge for us because on urban planning in Thailand, we're working on the, how to make the condition to control the activity for the people. But we didn't thinking what is the measure for the happiness for the people who live in the city. It's like a big challenge for me. When I saw it on the social media, I feel, oh, this is a big challenge because we're always concerned about, oh, we have to find the con uh, construction, we have to find the control, the FAR, control the OSR, some kind like that. But I think the keyword and the important thing, we have to think on the happiness of the people who live in the city. As my point of view, I think right now, we have, this is like a big challenge for many cities in the world to find the green space or open space for make the people who can interaction to know each other, to, you know, like, uh, hey, say hi to stranger, maybe in the future it can be someone you love, some kind like that. It's like our duty for as an urban planner to find a space like that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and... and <laughs> Merci beaucoup. And Kun Pai Khat Khat, were you happier in France than living in Thailand? <laughs> different? Different ways. Okay, different ways. Okay. Okay. Can I speak Thai? Yeah. Okay. 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 The first thing I discovered is connection between people um, in different connection in in places. Yep. Um, uh -huh. Between these two, three places. ครับและและทีนี้สิ่งแล้วก็อีกสิ่งหนึ่งคือผมว่าแต่ละสถานที่แล้วก็แหล่งการเรียนรู้ต่างๆมันค่อนข้างจะใกล้ใกล้ชุ
ครับผมค่ะ and that's all ขอบคุณครับแม็กซี่ค่ะ so we're now coming to Q&A session I mean I would love to hear more from you all but we are running out of time anybody have questions please raise your hand and we we'll pass the microphone to you Please introduce yourself. Hello, hello. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexon. Um, it seems obvious that to undertake the challenge of urbanization, uh, out of the box policies and uh, innovative ideas are, are required. We've seen the example of the Sky Park in Bangkok. And one of the key words tonight was. Decentralization and empowering of people. Okay, so what is the state? What is the current state of decentralization in in Thailand right now? I think Dr. Niramon <laughs> would know very would have good answer to that. I, I think maybe you you know you uh, you live here you know the situation. Um, for uh, I I think um, the bottleneck of. Uh, I mean, um, improving um, urban environment at the district level is um, the, the the problem of uh, administra local administration that I mentioned. Actually, it was not new. It has been um, discuss discussing for, I think, um, more than a decade, especially in the fields of uh, political science, but but um, I think, um, yes, the central government still would like to, they, 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 maybe they, they worry that uh, the local governments um, do not have uh, enough ability to take care of themselves and the people. So they still maintain the power, um, a lot of power at the, at the, at the central. Yes, so um, uh, I, I, I think now it's really at the crossroad of many, many angles. So um, also the, about the, the, the local government and administration is one of the issues. Right, thank you, Dr. Niramon. Any more questions? Hello, this is Bube from South Korea. I have one question to all of you that um, I'm really excited to see women in the position of enabler, facilitator, and connector. So if you could share your insights and your experience that witnessing or from yourself that what would be evolving women's role in this resilient and sustainable urban design and development that you were engaged, and what would be your vision for women's role for this um, better urban uh, environment. That would be really great to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maybe Dr. Adele? I am a researcher, and I'm, I have always considered myself as a researcher beyond, beyond genders. So I've never felt any difference from me and my male colleagues, even if my, in my sector in France, I think that in uh, the field of geography and planning, there is a majority of women, with many women also in position of power. So actually, to me, uh, I've just lived my life as a researcher. I don't know how to improve cities, because I'm a researcher myself, so I just study cities. And uh, so I've never felt, I may be lucky enough, to have never felt any kind of lack of equality towards me as a woman. Dr. Sarai, do you have something to add? I'm the only man on this stage. <laughs> so that's the answer already. <laughs> right, good answer indeed. Well, more questions? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joy, and I would like to speak 
as I am the citizen of the Bangkok, I was born in Phang Thon, and then I live in this district, Sa Thon Road, for all of my life. And, but this is the fourth month that I'm coming back to Bangkok, and I feel so strange that I cannot adjust to this city. And it is very, you know, I'm, I'm very into the words when we're talking about public space. And that, that is the thing that I really would like to, to see in, in my district or in Bangkok. But then I feel like even though we have public space, I'm, I'm not sure about the definition by the public space because it can be the park, it can be a playground, or even the shopping malls that we have plenty of them. But that, what kind of the public space that appropriate for Bangkok that can engage people to share more ideas, to you know, be part of the conversation, to make the city better? So that is my question, the definition of public space, the appropriate one. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Jiratip, do you have something to add? Um, in my opinion, uh, the public space can be at like, many scales. Um, but for, for my, like, that my work at, in, with the community, uh, I think the neighborhood park is very, very important for, for the local uh, because it's close to the communities and, and it provi um, provides uh, interaction between the many users um, and it's very uh, easy to access, but in Thonburi, I mean, in, also in Bangkok, is uh, to find this place is very, and uh, is very hard. Mostly, it's like under the under the high highway, or it's. I, I think the the place, the the context of the um, public space is not good enough. It's just like not planning. Is it's just left for the infrastructure development, something like that. Right, thank you. And can you chat a little bit? Sure. Um, I think this is really citizen role to define your public park, because in different cultures have a different use of public park. If you give this to the governor, they will make a park. <laughs> but if you think about what you, you can use this public space, it's become out something else. For example, if we, we are in Thailand, which is very hot, and sometimes it's a lot of rain. So we have to thinking that uh, do we need uh, really uh, like a public park, like a park, or we need some things to live our life every day. So that's citizen role to think about that. Right. Um, any more questions? I think we, um, we can answer for, we have uh, 10 minutes maybe, two questions, two last questions. Any more questions? Okay. It's not really a question, but from my own experience, uh, when I would like to meet someone else, uh, a public space for me is not just only a park. Uh, you can go to church as a Catholic. I have visited many times a Santa Cruz area uh, to attend to the Catholic Mass. And for ladies, if you would like to meet your future groom or maybe life partner, uh, just it's, it's a recommend. It's a strongly recommended, recommended place to go, uh, or even in Thailand, Buddhist, more than Buddhist, they go to the temple. Uh -huh. uh, a public space is not just only a park. I mean, you, you it's, it's depend on your religious belief. Sometimes your personal belief. It's just that. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay, if there are no more questions, then I would like to close our session. Thank you very much, our panelists, for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Dominic, as well. And most importantly, thank you all of you for joining our event tonight, and I hope that our discussion, discussion today is more or less beneficial and relatable to our role as citizens. Thank you very much, and have a good night. <laughs>